This is 4.5 rational functions. So there are two parts of the video. One part is just introducing the different types of asymptotes, and then the second part is actually graphing it. So on this one, this is just identifying the different types of asymptotes and how to identify it. So let's go ahead and talk about the definition. So rational functions is when a function is in a division form, just like this one, we have px divided by qx, then that's going to be a rational functions. Because with the rational functions, then you will have different types of asymptotes. If it's not a rational function, then most likely you won't have some of the different types of asymptotes that we're going to introduce you. Okay? So the first type of asymptote we're going to talk about is called the vertical asymptote. So a vertical asymptote is found by taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero. So in this case right here, we're going to take the denominator. So we're ignoring all of this numerator part of it. We're just taking the denominator and we're going to set it equal to zero and solve for it. So it's like finding the roots, right? It's the same idea. So from here, we're going to set it equal to zero. We bring the four over on the other side. You get 2x is equal to negative four. Divide both sides by 2, x equals negative 2. So negative 2 tells me that it's a vertical asymptote at negative 2. So here we have is negative 1, negative 2. So right here, we're going to do dotted lines. So asymptotes are going to be dotted lines. These are imaginary lines that when we graph them out, they will get really, really close to but never cross. So vertical asymptote is one of the asymptotes that they can never cross over. Now when we get to the, some of the different types of asymptotes, in certain places you can actually cross over. But on the vertical asymptote, you're going to get really, really close to it. So a function will come something like this, it'll come really, really close, and then never touching or crossing over it. It's going to make it like a U-turn. It's a fence right there for our graph right there. Okay? So that's the vertical asymptote. Again, it's found by taking the denominator and setting it equal to zero. Okay. Then the second type of asymptote we have is called the horizontal asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote, there are two types of horizontal asymptote, so I'm going to address that as well. So the first type right here, we have, um, we're going to go ahead and do a comparison. So it's the highest exponent that you have on the numerator, the highest exponent that you have on the denominator, and you're going to compare it. So this is the comparison that we're going to do right there at 6x over 2x. So if I have 6x over 2x, and what we're going to do is we're going to simplify that. So the x can cancel each other out, and then 2 goes into 6 three times, so your final answer will become 3. So in this case, because f of x is the same thing as y equals, so we're going to say y equals this, so our final answer is y equals 3 is a horizontal asymptote. Oh, let me go back and address the other one. So the vertical asymptote is always x equals as well. If you notice, uh, because the denominator right here is usually going to become x variable, so when we set it equal to 0, and this right here, vertical line, is an x-axis right here, so this is going to become x right there. Okay. So in this case, because it's y equals 3, we have to go on the y-axis right here and at 3. So here's 1, 2, 3 right here. So horizontal would go this direction. So then we would draw horizontally... And then make sure um, you label your x and y axis right there. That's one of my pet peeves, so make sure you label the x and y axis right there. Okay? So this is horizontal asymptote. Now, with the horizontal asymptote, actually the function can cross over, and sometimes in the middle part right here, it may cross over and then come back down, and then it starts to ride on it or slide all the way out as x approaches to infinity at this part. And same thing with this one. It'll approach as x approaches to negative infinity, it'll write really close to it underneath it or above it, but never crossing or, t uh, or touching it as we get to infinity. But there's a possibility it may cross over here somewhere in the body part of it uh, for the horizontal asymptote. Okay, So that's one. So again, the horizontal asymptote where you can compare those two right there, that's going to be the first part of the horizontal asymptote. Now the second part of the horizontal asymptote now I have to change the equation up to make this rule come true. So the second part is, if you notice, the denominator right here is larger than the numerator right here. So we're doing still the same comparison right here, but if the denominator power is larger than the numerator power, then you will have a horizontal asymptote. Because if it's reversed, let's say the numerator is higher than the denominator, you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you have a different type of asymptote. Okay. 
So if we take this right here, I'm going to go back to that y equals again, and then we say 6x over 2x squared, and if I simplify that, so the x's cancel out, but even if you cancel out the x's, one of the x's is going to stay on the bottom, so I still have an x on the bottom. The 2 goes into 6 three times, so we have is 3 over x right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is then, hypothetically, if I put a large number down here on the x part right here, let's say, oh, 1,000, okay? So if I put that in there, we're going to have is 3 over 1,000. Now, 3 over 1,000 is going to be some kind of large number, is what we, or I'm sorry, a small number, because technically when you divide this out, right, it's 3 right here, and then 1,000 is out here, so you would have to add, remember we would, put zero and you would have to add a couple of zeros right there to make sure it goes in right and then you would have to add the zeros as well so it's going to be basically like 0 0.003 right because that's also the tenth the hundredth and the thousandth place so in this case mathematically we say it's approximately zero because when you graph this out you can't graph out a 0 0.003 so the closest we can graph out is at zero right there so we're going to say then the y is equal to zero is the horizontal asymptote for this case. Okay. So if it's y equals zero, y equals zero is actually on the x-axis right here. So sometimes you may not be able to see it, but you have to know that this is part of an asymptote right there at y equals zero. This is y equals zero right here because remember y equals three up here. So then horizontally, this is zero down here. Okay, so again, let me review that again. So if you have a numerator, denominator, same power, just reduce it, get your y equals something number-wise, that's going to give us a horizontal asymptote. If your denominator power is larger than the numerator, then you're going to go ahead and reduce it, and basically it's always going to come out to zero right here. Okay, so that's the second type of the asymptote. So the last type of asymptote is what we're going to call, the book calls it oblique asymptote, but I've always known it as a slant asymptote, so I'm going to call it the slant asymptote. So the slant asymptote happens when you have an equation that is the opposite of what we just introduced. If you have the numerator power is larger than the denominator, then you're going to have a slant asymptote. Now in this case, you can't do a comparison right here like we did with the horizontal asymptote. So with the, only with the horizontal asymptote, that rule applies that you can do the comparison right there. But with the oblique or the slant asymptote, if you have a numerator that is higher than the denominator, the only way you're going to do this, well, actually, there's two ways. But one of the main uh, way you're going to do this is called the long division, right? So that's what you're going to apply. So the long division is a 2x plus 4 on the outside right here. Then we have is 6x squared. So now I have an x squared, but I don't have an x, so I have to placehold that right there, right? And then plus 3. So then from here we go 2, right, 2x times something gives us 6x squared, so that's going to give us 3x. We'll give us then 6x squared, and then 3x times 4 gives us 12x. So then long division is our fourth grade or third grade, fourth grade math, right? So we have to subtract it. So that disappears, then we have a 0 minus 12, so that's a negative 12x. And then plus 3, we bring it down. So then 2x times 6, right? Oh, negative 6. It would have to be a negative 6 to give us that 12 right there. So it will be then negative 12x and negative 6 plus or times um, positive 4 is negative 24. So if I put a minus out here, so that's going to cancel out because this negative and negative will cancel each other out right there. But this is 3 minus a negative 24, so technically it's a positive 24. So that's going to give us, what, 27 as a final answer. Okay, so that's your remainder. So when we write the remainder, it's going to be no longer R. Well, I guess, I don't know. So I guess we should then write is the 27 over 2x plus 4. And that plus 4 right there is found from out here always. Okay, so this is going to be the equation. Now, when you have it up here, technically it's a y equals right here, and you're going to graph it. So when we graph it, you cannot graph out remainders. So we're only going to graph this portion of it right there. Okay, but final answer technically is with the remainder, so make sure you put the remainder in there. So when you graph this out at negative 6, so it's y equals 3x minus 6, we start at negative 6 on the y-axis, right? So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then from there I'm running 
because that's your run and rise. So I'm running one and up three. So run one, up three. So one, two, three. And then if I do another one, run one, up three, one, two, three. So then again, this is uh, an asymptote. So it's lightly, or actually it's going to be dotted on this right here. So we have a graph right here. And then similar to the horizontal asymptote, the slant asymptote actually can cross in some parts right here. But eventually it's going to come really, really close to it and then ride really close to it, but never crossing or passing over it as it goes on to infinity part right there. Okay. Now, if you can't um, figure out is how to graph this out, you can always substitute numbers in. So if I, for example, like substitute in zero, then this is going to be zero in here. So zero minus six is negative six. So I start at negative six. If I substitute one into the X, one, that's three minus six, which is negative three. So you start up here. And if you put in 2, so 2 times 3 is 6, 6 minus 6 is 0, so that's where we got that dot right there, okay? So we'll graph those out right there. So those are the three different types of asymptotes, and so the next power, um, video should be then is how to graph it.